All right, guys, so welcome to NCLEX Crusade International. It is a pleasure for me to begin this seven-day NCLEX preparation, NCLEX training for all of you. I hope this training is beneficial, that you find what you're looking for. I have been communicating with you guys over the past few days in our Telegram group, and I can sense the frustration in, man, in many of the students that are preparing for the NCLEX. Some of you have taken the NCLEX before on multiple occasions and have failed. And I want you to know that it is okay. Failure is part of success. Some students prepare for the NCLEX, they take it and they pass in their first attempt. While other students, it might take them one, two, or three attempts. And it is okay because at the end of the journey, it's going to say, XYC student, you are a registered nurse or an LPN in the United States or Canada. So it is okay. Welcome to NCLEX Crusade International. And I hope that for the next 60 minutes, you find useful information that helps you prepare for the NCLEX the right way. All right, if so, you can tell me in the chat, where are you connecting from? Tell me the country, the state, if you're in the United States, the city that you're connecting from, and I will welcome each one of you. Today is gonna be a very interesting session. Relax, calm down, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna learn a lot, I assure you this. You will never think about the NCLEX the same way. All right, so let's see where you guys logging in from or joining our YouTube International Academy. Where are you logging in from? Miami, Florida. All right, New Jersey. Bradenton. Canada. Wow, welcome Canada, New York. So a lot of you from the US, very good. Nigeria, excellent. South Africa. Welcome. Massachusetts, Houston, New York, Miami, KSA, Nigeria. Wow, a lot of people from Nigeria. Awesome. Philadelphia, Ontario, Canada. Mexico, Colombia, all right, very good, excellent, well, welcome everyone. So what is the purpose of this seven day training? Why am I here? What can I really teach you? So this seven day training, my purpose is to guide you and mentor you and to show you the proper way to prepare and pass the NCLEX. The big question is, can I really do that? Can I help you? And for many of you, you have never seen me before. I am not as famous as other um, NCLEX preparation mentors or softwares or QBanks that exist now and day. But can I really help you? And I want to answer this question with this. I, I am 100% sure that I can help you prepare the right way. You might be listening to me and you can say, so what can this gentleman with this funny accent can teach me today? And I want you to know this. Just because I speak with an accent doesn't mean I think with an accent. I have a lot to teach you. And you're going to hear me saying things that you've never heard before. Why focus your time on being here for an hour? Throughout this seven-day training, I will teach you strategies that you need to know. I will teach you how to think critically. I will teach you to focus on what is important on an NCLEX 
question. And I want to give this disclosure, the beginning of our training, day one. This is a free YouTube training, okay? I will not ask you for money for this training. It is free, that's why I put it on YouTube. However, you need to be careful with scammers out there. I have been in YouTube for a while and I know that sometimes scammers go into videos and chats and they start requesting money. Do not fall into that scam. Do not buy anything online that says a free, free NCLEX questions or a, a list of re real NCLEX questions. It doesn't exist. You have to prepare the right way. You will not find an easy way out to passing the NCLEX, and that is important. So I want you to know that for the remainder of the training, you don't have to pay a single dime. That's why it's free and I put it on YouTube. However, YouTube has a feature that you can put super chat, super stickers. I'm not too familiar with it, but I've seen my student use it before in other live trainings. You're more than welcome. If you want to support our channel that way, you're welcome to do it. NCLEX Crusade International appreciates it. But you don't have to pay anything for this training. So thank you, Mr. Jorge Martinez, for helping our channel. I appreciate that. All right, so let's begin. What I want you to do now, I want you to eliminate any type of distraction that could hinder your ability to learn the things that I'm going to teach you today. So put your cell phone, mute, put it on the side, turn off the TV, and focus. And the most important thing, have something to write. Get a pen, a paper, and start writing the information that I will be sharing with you throughout this training. I'm going to try to make it in 60 minutes, but disclaimer, it could take us a little bit longer than 60 minutes, but 60 minutes is minimum. I know some of you is very late. It's like 1 a.m. or 2 or 3 a.m. in your country, and it is okay. Remember that you can always re-watch this uh, training on YouTube at another occasion. But we will be live for seven days starting today until Sunday every day at 5 p.m. Easter Standard Time. And we will meet usually from 5 to 6, 6.20 Easter Standard Time. I want to share with you the agenda that I have for our seven-day training. Thank you, Miss Betty Delgado, for supporting our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. So let's talk about our seven day agenda. In day one, which is today, we will talk about understanding the NCLEX world. I want you to understand the exam that you will be taking in the next few weeks, month, or maybe next year. Day two, we're going to talk about NCLEX categories physiological integrity, basic care and comfort, psychosocial integrity, those specific categories. And what we will do, we will focus on each one of them. I will teach you what you need to know for each one of them. And the most important thing, we will practice questions together in those NCLEX categories. Remember, this training is not about content. Although I may share some nursing content throughout the training, the purpose of the training is not to teach you content. I want to focus on critical thinking, okay? Day three and day four, we will continue discussing NCLEX categories, and we will continue to practice NCLEX style questions. Day five and day six is very important to see them live if you can. I know 
some of these viewers are in India and it's very late over there. But the priority strategies section is very important to see it live because that way you can interact and ask questions. Okay? That is going to be the most beneficial. Is it a sacrifice? Yes, but it will be worth it. Thank you, Ms. Janacy de la Vega. Thank you for supporting our NCLEX Crusade International YouTube channel. I appreciate it. All right. And then day five, day six priorities. And day seven, what I want to do is I'm going to talk about next steps that I can do to continue helping you. I want to get some insight on what other training you would like to receive. Let me tell you something. We're going to be together for a long time. And I will continue to post trainings for free here on YouTube to help each one of you out. The only thing that I ask in return, just help me out as well. Share the content with other nursing students, other individuals that they are preparing for the NCLEX. Help them out as well. And at the same time, you're going to help me grow my YouTube channel. So I don't want you to think that this is only a one-time event. This event is going to be only this time. I will not do it ever again live, but I want to uh, give you guys other trainings on other topics to continue helping you for uh, NCLEX preparation. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Alexandra Troncoso. Thank you for uh, supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. All right, all right, all right, all right. So it is important, do not miss any of these sessions live if you want to interact because in the future, we will not give this same training ever again. My goal, my plan is once this whole training is done, I will get small clips and I will put it on other YouTube videos to help you find specific topics because I know that Sometimes when the video is too long, students get lost in the middle and they don't find the information and everybody do, don't have 60 minutes or an hour and a half to watch a, a, a YouTube training. So that's why I want to uh, later on with time, cut them in, into smaller pieces and put other videos to help support your training. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Giselle Carreño for supporting my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. All right, so day seven is gonna be an open Q&A session. So basically on day seven, you're gonna have the opportunity to ask any question live via the chat. I will be monitoring the chat and I will be answering each question. It can be about NCLEX preparation. It could be about the exam day, any information that you could have I'll do the best I can to give you an answer. I might not have all the answers, but I'll do the best I can to help you out. So that's going to be a very important day as well. And every day, day one, day two, day three, all the way to day seven, we're also going to have a small session at the end of Q&A so I can answer any questions that you have um, think, thought about during the training, okay? Thank you, Ms. Anubis uh, Almagro, for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, let's continue. So what is today's agenda? Day one. Today's day one of our seven-day NCLEX preparation training. In today's uh, day one agenda, we will discuss who is NCLEX Crusade International. I will talk to you about the key to success, the key to passing the NCLEX. We'll talk about understanding the NCLEX world. I will share with you some important information to use in your NCLEX preparation. And at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So let's begin with who we are. Who is NCLEX Crusade International? My name is Rainier Arado. I'm a registered nurse in the United States. I have worked in many hospitals throughout the uh, Bay Area here in Tampa, Florida. I live in Florida and I've been a nurse for over five years. 
basically, NCLEX Crusade International uh, was developed back in 2017. And our first academy was called NCLEX Crusade, not international. And basically, I was focusing on helping Latino nurses prepare for the NCLEX. Nurses that English was their second language and they only spoke Spanish or primarily Spanish. So we developed the academy for them and we created several NCLEX preparation courses that up to, up to today we continue to use and guide them. We've had over 5,000 students prepare for the NCLEX with us. So we are more known in the Spanish community than the English community. So that's why you see that it's a, a new YouTube channel. I recently started working on this YouTube channel, but I can tell already that I will be able to help a lot of you guys, especially if English is your second language, but you live in, in a country where you don't speak Spanish either. So this academy the, and this YouTube channel, NCLEX Crusade International, will help you out greatly. And for those students that English is their primary language, you know what? You have no excuse. You have no excuse to prepare and pass this NCLEX. If this guy with a phony accent, I was a police officer before, if I pass the NCLEX, why can't you? If hundreds of my students who that English is their second language has passed the NCLEX, why can't you? I will share with you the tools that you need to pass the NCLEX. We've had, we have students all over the world. We started with students in the United States, but now we have students in Colombia, we have students in Peru, Argentina, Spain, uh, Cubans that uh, immigrate to the United States. We have a lot of people from Latin America, Mexico. We have students all over the world. We have a bilingual academy. We have a very high passing rate and we've been mentors in many universities here in the United States in Florida. Now, let's talk about business. Let's talk about the NCLEX world. Thank you, Gladys Bell and Denia Sanchez for uh, supporting our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. So what do you need to do to master the NCLEX. The first thing that you need to do is change. Change your perception about the NCLEX. Change the way you are studying or preparing for the NCLEX. What do I mean? Why change? If you do the same thing over and over and you have noticed that it's not working with you, if you keep doing the same thing, you will get the same result. And I continue over, seeing over the past four or five years, I see students making the same mistakes over and over. And those mistakes is what is guiding them to fail the NCLEX. But you cannot change if you don't know what to change into. And that is what I want to talk to you today. The three pillars of success. Usually students have a plan, a plan that they think work for them, a plan that they have seen has worked with other people. They see other nursing students and they say, well, they did that and that worked for them. So it's going to work for me too. Not necessarily. A lot of students, a lot of nursing students are on this plan A. And what is plan A? They either ask a friend, they start memorizing questions that other students have seen on their NCLEX day, only to discover later on that the same questions those students had on their test, they will not see on their test. So I think that preparing for the NCLEX, following what worked for somebody else might not necessarily work for you. I don't know if you have seen or heard students say, well, that student used the U world and it was great for them. 
And you go and you use the U world and you go to the NCLEX and you fail. Why? If it was beneficial for one student, why wasn't it beneficial to you? Well, maybe you didn't use it the correct way. Maybe you've heard students saying, I use Kaplan. It was great. I passed the NCLEX on the first attempt with 75 questions. You take the NCLEX and you fail. Why? I think that many students use same, the same resources, but they use it differently. And the way you use the resource is what's going to make it count. Tonight, today, I will share with you how to use some of the resources that exist today for you in order to prepare for the NCLEX the right way. I encourage you to find a mentor and follow a system. What do I mean by this? I can be your mentor if you want to. You can follow me on my YouTube channel, watch my videos, listen to my videos, and you will learn and I will guide you. That's why I have created this seven day training for you. But if it's not me, find a mentor that is known to have been successful. Find a mentor that can really help you and guide you and teach you the fundamental tools to passing the NCLEX. And follow that system because if other students have used them and they pass, so can you. And I always tell this to my students. You know, we've, we've taught over 5,000 students. And I will tell you, do all my students pass? No. I'm not going to sit here and lie to your face. No. Not all my students pass. I don't believe in the 99.999% passing rate. That is a lie. Because there are multiple characteristics that will determine if a student pass or fail and does not necessarily have to do with the system itself. It could be, for, ex for example, language barrier. The system can be great, but if you don't understand the NCLEX questions, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for you to pass the NCLEX. So I, I do think that it's good to have a mentor. But hear me out. Try not to have many mentors. Why not, Ray? Why can I not have multiple mentors? Because different mentors have different guidelines of, or different way of seeing how to prepare for the NCLEX. And sometimes when you're listening to a lot of people, you get more confused because a professor may say one thing and then the other professor says the same thing but different and you get all confused. So if after today's training, you like the way I teach you, you like my focus, you're more than welcome to follow me on our NCLEX Crusade International YouTube and I will tell you, it will make a difference. So let's talk about the key to passing the NCLEX. Let's get to, to the most important topic of tonight. Thank you, Maribel Mercano. Thank you, Lyudmila, for supporting uh, our channel. I appreciate it. So what is the key to passing the NCLEX? Number one, understanding the NCLEX world. Number two, develop your critical thinking. Number three, apply priority strategies. If you do this, if you understand the NCLEX world, you develop your critical thinking and you apply prioritization strategies, you will pass the NCLEX. I guarantee you that. Now, when is this going to happen? I don't know. It depends on you. It depends on how strict you are on your studying. It, it depends how often you practice your critical thinking. It depends on how often you practice questions. It depends on how many hours you're dedicating for NCLEX preparation. 
So let's begin with key number one, understanding the NCLEX world. And what I am going to do, what I'm going to tell you next, you probably never heard before. Because every other mentor out there says the contrary to what I'm, going, I'm about to say. You do not need to be an expert in nursing content. I want you to hear me out. I'm not saying that you're not going to study nursing content. What I am saying is that you do not need to be an expert in nursing content. You are not presenting to the medical exam. You're presenting to a nursing exam. So yes, you are going to study content, but you do not need to become an expert. And this is the best way. This is the best image that I have on my mind to show you how the NCLEX is. I don't know how it is in other countries, but here in the US, when you want to become a, a driver, you have to go to the DMV and do a, 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 a what is it called, a, a written and a practical test. The day you go for your practical test, an instructor is going to sit by you during this practical test. And that instructor can care less if you know how the fuel injectors in the car works. That instructor don't care if you are an expert in engineering, in mechanical engineering. All they care is that you know how to go straight, backward, right, left, without killing somebody. NCLEX is similar to this. You do not need to be a doctor, but you need to be a safe nurse. So what is the NCLEX? NCLEX is a diagnostic exam that measures your competency level in nursing content and patient care, but this is the key. This is the most important. The purpose of the NCLEX is to identify if you can perform nursing care in a safe and effective way. So how do you prove the NCLEX that you are safe and that you are effective? Answering NCLEX questions the right way. So how do you answer NCLEX questions the right way? You need to know the difference between a recall and recognition style question, an analysis style question, and an application style question. You see, when you take the NCLEX, there are going to be a variety of questions. Some questions are going to be easier than others, and some questions are going to be harder than others. At all times, the NCLEX is going to be measuring if you know how to be safe, if you're going to protect your patient. So the first thing that I want to do is show you in the following slides how to answer and how to identify different style of questions. Because in order to answer recall and recognition style question, is different than what you need to know to answer analysis style question or application style question. So let's see the difference in the following slides. Thank you, Gianni Celis Mendoza. Thank you, Anita, for supporting our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. So this next section is going to be interactive. I will pose a question and I will give you about a minute to answer that specific question. And what I want you to do, once you know the answer, I want you to type the answer in the comment section. All right? Now, these first questions, they're very simple. Okay? It's not hard because this first question that I'm going to show you is on the recall and recognition side 
of NCLEX style questions. Recall and recognition style questions are those that are below the passing standard. They're basic content question. You can be an expert in nursing content and you are going to be able to answer this question perfectly. But you can be an expert in nursing content and that is not going to necessarily help you answer the following types of questions, which is analysis and application. So let's see, let's see the first question. It says, which of the following is a complication that occurs after a percutaneous liver biopsy? We have answer A, nausea and vomiting, constipation, hemorrhage, pain at the biopsy site. So I will wait and give you about a minute, minute and a half to answer this question. I hope you get this question correctly because it is a very simple question. So I'm looking at the chat, waiting for your answers. Right, so I see many of you are answering C. Some of you answered D. Okay. All right. Thank you, Miss Tania, for that super sticker. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support to our channel. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth Botiel and Miss Nerladis Galvez. Thank you, Miss Nerladis, for supporting our channel. I appreciate it. So, what is a complication that occurs after a percutaneous liver biopsy? So, let me get my handy dandy pen. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna love this pen, <laughs> this red marking on the PowerPoint presentation. So complication, this question is about complication after. This is an important keyword, and we're gonna talk about keywords in a little bit. After a percutaneous liver biopsy, why is, why is this word important? Because if it says before a percutaneous liver biopsy, it's a totally different question. The answer might be different. It may be nursing interventions before the liver biopsy or nursing interventions after the liver biopsy. So which of the following is a complication after a percutaneous liver biopsy? We know that the most important answer is hemorrhage. Why? Because after the percutaneous liver biopsy, the highest risk that we can encounter is hemorrhage. Now, are we going to see pain post percutaneous liver biopsy? Yes, but what is the difference? What, is, what does complication mean? When you see the word complication, you're looking for something that is unexpected, not expected. You see, pain at the biopsy site is expected because the patient just undergo, undergo a percutaneous liver biopsy. So, complication means I'm looking for something unexpected that is going to cause great complication on the patient. So, the correct answer is hemorrhage. Good job. Now, this is a recall and recognition style question. Look at this question now. This is a little bit more difficult style of question. You have to really understand what is going on. I will give you a minute and a half to answer this question. Thank you, Ms. Barbara, 
for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you, Miss Jeanette, for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you, Miss Lourdes, Rodriguez, Mr. Aniam Rochelle, Yarila Ponce, thank you for supporting our channel. All right, so what's the answer? All right, I see some answering C, D. It says, which of the following symptoms observed after a percutaneous liver biopsy will indicate a complication from the procedure. So, professor, this is about the same question. What's different here? It's the same question. Very similar answers, but there's something new, something different. That's why this question is a little bit harder than the question before. Because now, Answer C is still the correct answer, but it does not say hemorrhage. It says tachycardia, a pulse of 120, hypotension, 90 over 60, and normal respiratory rate. It does not say hemorrhage anywhere, but there are clinical manifestations of hemorrhage or bleeding, which is compensatory tachycardia and hypotension. So this question right here is still a content-based question, but it's a little bit harder than the question before. Now, look on the next example. The real difference between a content-style question and an analysis and application style question. See, in this question, you could be an expert at liver biopsy. Maybe you study the standards fully, the whole book, and you still might not be able to answer this question correctly. Because in these types of questions, usually what you will see is multiple correct answers, but you have to identify which one is the priority or the most important. <clears throat> the questions before, they were mainly right or wrong answers, but in this one, you have several answers that could be correct. In other words, in a priority question, you could see a mixture of correct answer, but you have to identify which one is the most important one. So let's see. Thank you, Ms. Ogiani Fontaine for supporting our channel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Raisa for supporting our YouTube channel. And thank you, Ms. Uh, Delgado for supporting our YouTube channel. So a nurse is providing a care for a client in the medical surgical unit. The unit where the patient is located is important. Which nursing intervention post liver biopsy is the priority? Remember, keyword post biopsy. Why is this post important? Answer number one, assess for the completion of informed consent is a nursing intervention prior to the liver biopsy, not post liver biopsy. So answer number one, we're going to eliminate. I want you to listen my analysis process. The questions today are not very difficult, but I do not want to frustrate you guys on the first day. So we're going to take it easy today. It's going to get way harder as the week progresses, okay? But hear me out. 
listen to my thinking process. I am not looking for the right answer. I'm looking for an incorrect answer that I can eliminate. I'm using what is called the process of elimination, which is the best technique that you can use to answer NCLEX style questions. Thank you, Ms. Areli Montero for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, so answer number one is eliminated. Answer number two says, inform the client of the importance of maintaining bed rest for several hours. Important answer. Answer number three, assess the biopsy site for bleeding. Hmm, very important. And answer number four, position the client supine to prevent bleeding. Ding, 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 ding. Houston, we have a problem. Why? Anytime you see a change in position in an NCLEX question or an NCLEX answer, you have to think about that position and determine why would I put the patient in that position and how is it going to help? How is that position change going to help prevent or promote something? So you have to think, is supine position the right position post liver biopsy and is it really going to prevent bleeding? So that is a very important question you need to ask yourself. So the answer is, no, wrong. This is the incorrect position post liver biopsy. Why is it incorrect? Because the patient is positioned on the right side to prevent bleeding, not supine. So answer number four, I can eliminate. So another answer that I can eliminate. Now we have two and three. We have bed rest, that that is important, and assessment. Sometime during the training, you will learn a strategy that is called assessment versus implementation strategy. That is an advanced critical thinking strategy that can help you prioritize. We're not going to go into that strategy today because I will drive you crazy if I tell you all that today. We will discuss it in the last few days of this week training. This is why I'm telling you, you will learn a lot in this training. That's why on the video that I, that I put, I said, I try, I try to be funny a little bit there. I said, can, can this really free YouTube training teach me something? We're so accustomed that something for free is not valuable. It's free because I want to help you guys out. Thank God we have our academy. We have a lot of students. But I want to help this community. I have been watching a lot of videos on YouTube for NCLEX preparation. The videos that you guys are seeing every day and many of them, they're lacking this very important concept, which is critical thinking and prioritization. Why nobody's teaching about that? That is the question I ask myself. Why I do not see people really going into in-depth about critical thinking? Because that is the key to passing the NCLEX. So if you use the assessment versus implementation strategy, your answer is going to be answer number three. Why? Why answer number three? In this scenario, if you look at the stem of the question, there is no indication that the nurse has completed an assessment. The nurse hasn't, hasn't completed an assessment. And this does not look like an emergency. So once you learn this strategy, assessment versus implementation, you will learn that in those scenarios where the nurse has not completed an assessment and doesn't look like an emergency, 
the answer will be assessment, not implementation. If you use Maslow's hierarchy of needs, answer number two, it is bed rest. Bed rest is physiological. Bleeding is physiological as well, but bleeding is ABC, and ABC has the priority. So if you use assessment versus implementation strategy, answer three is the correct answer. If you use Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs strategy, three is the correct answer. So as you can see, you're thinking differently now than what you're probably accustomed to think on an NCLEX style question. This is only the beginning. You're not going to learn this overnight. It will take time for you to learn this. But you'll get there little bit by little bit. Okay? All right. So answer is three, assess biopsy site for bleeding. Thank you, Ms. Graciela uh, Masurk, for supporting our channel. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the comments. <laughs> awesome. You guys are awesome. The Dream 83, I love the way you teach. Thank you. I appreciate it. So if you look at this question, it's the same topic as the two questions before. But the style of question is different. Now you have to think more in depth. Why do we have to assess for bleeding? Because the highest complication or risk involving post liver biopsy is hemorrhage, bleeding. The same thing that we've been talking about for the past two questions. But answer number three doesn't say bleeding, doesn't say hypotension, and doesn't say hemorrhage, but it's a nursing intervention that you must do. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Alba. Nicole said three goes before two. Yes, Nicole, another reason, another reason why three is the answer. Two, when it says inform the client of the importance, that's mainly psychosocial in nature. You're teaching about something. Yes, bed rest is physiological. We know that. But the, the focus of answer number two is more towards teaching. And nursing assessment takes the priority over teaching in this scenario. Thank you, Ms. Gladys Bell, for supporting our channel. Thank you, Pilar Matos, uh, for supporting the channel. The best professional team. <laughs> Thank you so much. Nicole, teach me math also. Dosage calculation. <laughs> we can leave that for another, another day. Vivian, your teaching is top notch. You're doing very well. Thank you, Vivian. I appreciate it. I'll tell you this. I haven't been this nervous in like five years because I'm so accustomed of doing these teachings in Spanish that it, I'm like thinking of what word am I going to say before I start throwing things in Spanish here, and you'll be like, huh, what, what is he talking about? So, but thank you for the support, and thank you for uh, my students that I know they're here. Quick question, who in the chat right now, how many of you are NCLEX Crusade students, like in our uh, bilingual academy? How many of you are one of our students? I wanna see if you guys are here supporting your professor. <laughs> All right, I will see it in the comments. Thank you, Jedith, I appreciate it. All right, perfect. Well, what do you think so far of the training? We're about halfway, okay? We still got a lot, a lot to go through, but we're getting there. Remember, I told you today it was going to be take it easy, okay? It's the, the introduction, the welcome 
to NCLEX Crusade International. I promise it will get harder. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for supporting our channel. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Delgado. All right. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Okay. Like I told you at the beginning, I want you to help me out as well. So if you've liked this training so far, if you think that this training is going to be beneficial to you on your NCLEX preparation, do something for me. In YouTube, they like the like button. And when people like videos, they promote that video. They, 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 they show the video to other people. So I want you to help me. I want you to help me help other nursing students that they're preparing for the NCLEX. So if everyone that is here in this training today, if you like it, if you don't like it, I understand. But if you like this training so far, Go ahead and click the like button, the thumbs up button on the video. That way it's going to show me that you like it and it's going to show YouTube that you like it. And it's going to help me grow my channel as well and help other people that are in need. So if everyone can do that, snap that like button to help me and other students. Thank you, Ms. Sylvia uh, Torres for supporting our channel. Thank you, Yadira. Uh, one of our old students raised her nurse now in Las Vegas. <laughs> Blessings, Yadira. Nice to see you here. Okay, perfect. All right, so the next thing, if you like it, help me share it with other students. So maybe you know a student that is preparing for the NCLEX and they're not here. Share it with them. Share it on WhatsApp. Share this video on Facebook. That way other nursing students can see it as well. All right. Uh, Evelio, I'm taking the Spanish version of this academy. They are the best out of this world. Success guaranteed. Thank you, Avelio. I appreciate it. Uh, Adislay. Thank you, Adislay, for supporting our YouTube channel. All right. Well, thanks to everyone that liked the video and shared it. So let's continue. Let's not waste any more time on that. Thank you, Mr. Martinez, for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, so the next pillar of success for NCLEX is developing your critical thinking, okay? So how do you do that? How do you develop your critical thinking? You develop the critical thinking one, by prax practicing questions every single day. You have to practice questions every single day. And I will share with you the cue banks that I think are the best in a little bit. I will share that with you. But there's something called the key factors of an NCLEX question. There's a video on my YouTube channel that exists right now that talks about these five key factors but I would like to share it here live so you see a different approach. So you have to identify these five key factors and they are one, the client, the problem or healthcare needs, three, subjective or objective data, keywords, and you need to identify if the question you're dealing with is a priority style question or a content question. Now, the training is not done. I see a few of you saying goodbye. No goodbyes yet. We got a lot to go through still. Okay? So if you leave early, you will miss out on a lot of information. So identify who your patient is, 
the problem or healthcare need, subjective or objective data, keywords, and you need to identify if this question is priority or content-based. So I want to use this example to show you how each of these key factors present on an NCLEX question. Now, you need to understand this. Are you going to see each key factor on every NCLEX style question? No. You could see three of the factors. You could see one of the factors or four of the factors, but you need to look for them. The first one is the client. So in this question, where is the client? Well, is a woman or who is a client? Is a woman. Why is this important? Well, if it's a woman or a man, a child or an adult or an elderly patient is important. Number two, second factor. What is the problem or healthcare needs? Well, the patient has right upper, upper quadrant pain, right upper quadrant pain radiating to her back. Her pain is nine on the scale of one to 10. So we have determined the patient is a woman and notice they are giving you more information that is important. 22 weeks gestation. It's important when they tell you the, the weeks of gestation because that way you're going to know if it's in the first trimester, second trimester, or third, third trimester. Now, do I have subjective or objective data? That is extremely important to identify if it's subjective or objective, objective data, especially once you start using the assessment versus implementation strategy. So you need to learn how to identify these key factors before you start applying those strategies. So do I have subjective or objective data? In this scenario, I have objective data. I will tell you why it's objective in a little bit. Other keywords. Other keywords are, it says that the pain is nine and it has occurred two times in the last week for about four hours at a time. So it's a pain that is prolonged. It's not a quick pain that comes and goes. It stays for a while. Another important word is that the pain is not associated with food intake. And then the last key point is that this question is a priority question because the keyword is highest priority. Why is this important for me? When you see that the question is a priority question, you have to use a prioritization strategy to answer that question. If you see that it's a content-based question, then all you have to use is content. Easy. But when it says highest priority or other keywords that indicates prioritization, you have to use a strategy. Otherwise, you're not going to answer correctly. Let's go into a little bit more detail on the patient. If they tell you the patient's age, gender, ethnicity, religious belief, mental status, that is important. Nursing care is not the same for a pediatric patient than an elderly patient. It's not the same for a female or a male. For a pregnant female versus a not pregnant female. If it tells you that the patient is Jehovah Witness, it tells you about the religion that is important. If it tells you that the patient is confused 
or alert or lethargic, that is important as well. So you have to identify who your patient is and what is the status of your patient. What is the clinical picture scenario or clinical manifestations? If they tell you what the scenario is, that is important. For example, if it tells you that the scenario takes place after a plane crash and there are multiple victims, that is different than if you're doing a triage in the ER with one patient. Be why is that important? Because prior prioritization changes when there is a mass casualty event versus a non-mass casualty event. So that is an example of why it's important to identify this. What are the patient's symptoms, subjective or objective? And we have to go a little bit deeper with this because in nursing school, they have taught us that if the nurse sees it is objective and it is true, but I'm looking more about the symptoms and the data that the question is giving us. And I want you to think about it this way, especially for the assessment versus implementation strategy that you will learn later on. If it is described by the patient, okay, or not observed by the nurse, it is subjective. Now, objective data is observed by the nurse, but in parentheses, measurable. That is important. If you have data on the stem of the question that is measurable, is numeric, you can tell the place value that is an objective data. Why is this important for you? Because in scenarios where the information that they're giving you is subjective and it's not clear, most of the time the answer is going to be an assessment. Versus if you see a scenario that you have objectable data, okay, measurable data, especially when you have objective data and an emergency, usually the answer is an implementation. Why am I saying usually? Because we cannot generalize in anything with on the NCLEX world, but for the most part, when we see those scenarios, the answer is implementation. If you have a measurable data, and is an emergency. Understanding the style of question is important. Like I said, if you see that the question is a priority, then you have to identify what priority strategy you can use. But professor, how, do I, how, do, how can I determine that I am in front of a priority question? Well, you're going to see keywords like priority which patient is a priority? What is the priority nursing action? Now, there are scenarios that you don't see the word priority and still is a priority question. For example, a patient arrives in the emergency department. A patient arrives by ambulance. A patient is returning to the floor. What is the most important intervention the word most important is a priority. Thank you, Ms. Janay Gonzalez, Ms. Mildred, Mildred Diaz for supporting our channel. I appreciate it. Important, what is the most important intervention? What patient should the nurse see first, call first? That is a priority style of question. There are common keywords that indicate the need to prioritize. Example, these words, essential, first, priority, or highest priority, immediate, initial, most important, most likely, next, primary, vital, most appropriate. If 
you see this, these keywords, it's telling you that you're probably in front of a priority question. And whenever you see that, you're going to tell yourself, okay, what priority strategy can I use? Assessment versus implementation, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, these are method strategy, the doctor strategy. There's a bunch of prioritization strategies that you can learn. And we will discuss some of them here in our, in our seven day training. Another key factor is understanding and applying prioritization strategies. And this is what most of you guys know already. This is the most common uh, known prioritization strategy. You know that priority is established in this order, airway, breathing, circulation. You know that airway goes before breathing and breathing goes before circulation. That is a known fact, I will say in most nursing students. However, you might not know this other part of the prioritization guidelines. We have pain, education, and feelings. You might not know this. For the NCLEX, pain is considered psychosocial in nature. So if you don't know this, if you didn't know this, Comment on the chat. I didn't know that. I didn't know pain was considered psychosocial in nature for the NCLEX, but it is. Why? The patient is not going to die because of pain. But how come, professor, what if a patient has chest pain from a myocardial infarction? The problem there is not the pain. The problem there is circulatory. Because in an MI, a myocardial infarction, there are occlusion of the coronary arteries or the coronary artery. So the problem there is circulatory. That is why it has the priority, not because of the pain. And a lot of times I see nursing students prioritizing pain. I am not saying that pain is never the priority. It, there could be scenarios where pain is the priority, but you have to learn how to identify when pain is the priority. So physiological needs has the priority over psychosocial needs. ABC is priority over pain, education, and pain. Now, let's look at some examples and let's see how we can implement prioritization strategies. We can think critically to answer those style of questions. The following questions, they're a little bit harder. They're above the passing standard on the NCLEX. It's not the same as the questions that we've seen so far. So do not move from that chair. This is getting very, very interesting. So let's go to the next question. Thank you, uh, Milange Noel. Thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. So here's the next question. Once you're ready to tell the answer, go ahead and comment the answer in the comment section. So it says, a young adult is admitted to the emergency department. Now we know about keywords. See, maybe before this training, you didn't know about keywords. Now you know. A young adult is admitted to the emergency department. So we have a little bit of description here about the patient. Young adult. What else do we have? This admitting to the emergency department after an automobile accident, and, I'm, and after an automobile accident, the client is anxious and complains of severe pain in the right chest from contact with the steering wheel. Hmm. We have a lot of good information here. The patient is complaining of pain. So the problem that we have on the stem of the question is pain. And how is the style of pain or the type of pain? 
severe. So we have mild, moderate, severe. So this is a very important scenario. We're dealing with an emergency here. It says, the nurse observes shallow respiration. Why is this important? The stem of the question is telling you that the nurse is doing or did an assessment. So we have a scenario where the nurse observes for shallow respiration. So this means we have a respiratory problem. So what is the priority for me as the nurse in a respiratory problem? You see, now you have a clear picture of what is happening. Now it's, it makes a lot more sense than before because we've taken the time to review the question. Professor, but it takes a long time to do this. Not really. Once you develop the technique, you do it very quickly. It's not gonna tell take it's not gonna take you as much time. I'm doing it slower here so, so it makes sense to you, so you can learn. But you can do this very, very quickly. So we know that we're dealing with an emergency. We know that the nurse did an assessment. We know that the patient is in severe pain and we have a respiratory problem. How do we know that this is a priority question? Keyword first. Reduce the client's anxiety. Important. Why is it important? The patient is anxious. Good answer. <clears throat> Maintain adequate oxygenation. Important answer. Why? The patient has respiratory problems. Shallow respirations. Answer number three. Administer pain medication to decrease the chest pain. Important. Because why? The patient is in severe pain. And number four. Maintain adequate circulating volume. Oh, okay. This one does not make a whole lot of sense to this scenario. There's no indication of bleeding. There's no hypotension with tachycardia like we saw in the post-percutaneous liver biopsy scenario. So maintaining adequate circulating volume, in my opinion, does not make much sense in this scenario. So I think we can eliminate it. So what is the first action here? To reduce the anxiety level? To maintain adequate oxygenation? Or to administer pain? When the three problems are accurate to the scenario. If you don't use a prioritization strategy, then you won't be able to know what's the correct answer. Reduce anxiety is psychosocial. Oxygenation is physiological, and you learn today that pain is psychosocial. So if we use Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we think about physiological needs takes or has the priority over psychosocial needs, then we can eliminate answer number one, and we can eliminate answer number three, so the correct answer is answer number two. Why is this the correct answer? For priority reasons, airway breathing has priority. But also, does it make sense to the stem of the question? Of course it makes sense. The patient has shallow respiration. You know that this patient can have many complications, including ABG's complications. And we might go into that on another train. Learn a little bit about ABG interpretations, learn about acidosis and alkalosis, respiratory or metabolic. We can go into, into that in another train. 
So let's look at the other question. Let's look at another scenario. So read about that question. Tell me what you think. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, yeah. Yo Yoshi. Yo Yoshi. Thank you for the support to our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. So it says the client diagnosed with pericarditis is complaining of increased pain. Which intervention should the nurse implement first? Wow. Great scenario. We know it's a priority scenario because we see first. It does not give you a lot of information about the patient. It just says the client. That's it. Nothing else. So in this scenario, it's not important. Keynote, in case you didn't know, if it doesn't specify the patient, the patient is an adult. Okay? Always. It's an adult. Unless it says pediatric patient or an elderly adult. So we're dealing with an adult that was diagnosed with pericarditis. So this is the medical diagnosis. And this is what the patient is complaining. Complaining of increased pain. The word increase means change in condition. That's what it means. So you have to say, okay, so the patient now has increased pain. What is that telling me? Well, I think you got to ask other questions. Like, for example, what is the level of pain? What did it increase to and from? Because, for example, if I tell you that the patient had a pain level of 2 and now has a pain level of 3, did it increase? Yes, it increased, but that's not a big problem. But if it increased from 1 to 9, well, it went from a mild type of pain to severe pain. So in this scenario, we don't have a whole lot of information about the pain. So the data that we have is subjective in nature. Is it an emergency? I don't know. Because chest pain in pericarditis is expected. Now, what type of pain? What is the severity of the pain? So in this scenario, we're probably looking to do an assessment and validate the information that we have on the stem of the question. Administer oxygen. This is an implementation. Evaluate assessment phase. Urinary output. That's important. Assess the client for cardiac complication. Assessment. Validation. And encourage the client to use the incentives barometer. Teaching. This is an implementation. Well, we already talked about an assessment has not been completed in this scenario because all we have is something referred from the patient. And I cannot tell if this is an emergency or not. So I'm going to go with an assessment so I can eliminate answer number one. Wait, professor. You eliminated an answer that says oxygen? Yes. Why? There is no clinical indication that the patient is in any type of respiratory distress. So there's no need to provide oxygen on this patient. And this is a, a very common misconception with nursing students. Every time they see a oxygen, they want to click on oxygen. Every time they see assessment, they want to click on assessment. No, it depends. It depends on the scenario. So answer number one, we can eliminate. Why? There's no clinical manifestation of a respiratory problem. 
Assessment for urinary output, thinking more on circulation as well. Assessment for cardiac complications. Multiple complications. Hmm, this is a good assessment. And number four, encouraging to use the incentives parameter. Can this help the patient? Yes, in the future, but it's not my priority action at this moment. So we can eliminate answer number four. And in between two and three, which of the two answers go directly to the problem? Pericarditis is a cardiac problem. So I need to do an assessment and look for cardiac complications to identify if this pain, if it's secondary to pericarditis or if, the, if there is another type of complication going on that is causing the pain. So answer number three is the correct answer. Let's go to the following question. It says, the client with increased intracranial pressure is receiving mannitol. Oh, we have a very interesting question now. We have pharmacology now involved. Because the stem of the question is telling us that the patient is receiving a medication. So we don't have a lot of information about the patient. We have a problem of increased intracranial pressure. And the patient is receiving medication. Which intervention should the nurse implement to evaluate the effectiveness of the medication? So now what we're trying to do is an evaluation to identify keyword if the medication is effective. Why is this keyword important? I'm not looking for a side effect of the medication. I'm not looking for an adverse effect of the medication. I am looking for an answer that tells me the patient is better. This medication is helping the patient with a neurological problem. So I have to look for an answer that tells me something neurological. So by telling this, I think it's very clear on what the possible answer could be. So let's review the answers. Answer number one, monitor the client's vital sign. Important. Vital sign covers a lot of information. So I like answer number one. Maintain a strict intake and output. Intake and output is going to be more pertaining to, I guess, dehydration or hydration status. But does it tell me if the medication is effective in a neurological problem? No. So I think answer number two, we can eliminate. Now, look at answer number three. Assess the client neurological status. Is the patient alert, oriented? Is the patient lethargic, confused? So answer number three is an assessment as well. Well, professor, what do I do now? I have two assessments and both of them are important. Vital signs, that's very important. Why not vital signs? Why select neurological status, which is the right answer, over vital signs. Very simple. Whenever you see an answer that tells you to do vital signs, that is generalized, but you see another answer that is as specific to the problem, that validate the specific problem, you need to select that answer that validates the specific problem. In this scenario, answer number three is more specific than vital signs, that is more generalized. And answer number four, to check the osmolality levels, well, this is important because we are administering mannitol, 
but does not evaluate the patient neurologically speaking. So we can eliminate answer number four. The correct answer is three. To resume, nursing students, NCLEX crusaders, in order to pass the NCLEX, you need to have the ability to understand the NCLEX world. You have to understand what the NCLEX wants you to know. You need to prove them that you are a safe and effective nurse by thinking critically. You have to develop your critical thinking and you have to apply priority strategies. If you become an expert in content, but you do not develop your critical thinking and you do not apply priority sanction strategies, you will probably not pass the NCLEX. This is the reality. You have to face that reality. But I'm here for you. I am here to help you and guide you and show you this part that doesn't exist right now, at least not on YouTube. So I'm willing to show you that. I'm willing to practice with you together. And that is why I created this training. I hope it's very beneficial to each one of you. So another thing that I've, see, I, I've seen in nursing students is that they have a lot of information and they don't really know what to do. They have so much information that they don't know where to begin. Like I said, sometimes all of you guys have a lot of mentors out there and you get confused in between everybody's thought process. I will tell you what I have used and what I teach my students to use with their NCLEX preparation. A very awesome book that I, I hope each one of you uh, have in, in, as one of your tools is the Saunders book, okay? Saunders, the eighth edition. NCLEX RN, if you're going for the NCLEX RN board, or the LPN if you're sitting for the LPN. So use the Saunders to study. Now, there is no need to memorize the Saunders book. Use it as a resource to validate certain information. Two cube banks that I think they are the best. There's, there are many cube banks out there, but I think UWorld and Kaplan are the best Q banks that exist nowadays. I know that many of you, you're going to be asking, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? I don't know all the, all the resources out there, especially when it comes to Q banks, because nowadays er everybody has a Q bank. So I'm going with the most uh, experienced ones. I personally use Kaplan when I was preparing for the NCLEX. And it was very beneficial to develop that critical thinking because the questions there, they're higher thinking style questions. So use these resources in your NCLEX preparation. And as the training goes, we will continue to provide further information about this. Okay. So what is next? So what do you need to do to continue the training? This is only day one. And be honest in the, in the comment section. Have you learned? Do you think it has been beneficial this hour and a half of your day to listen to this guy on YouTube? Have you learned something today that maybe you didn't know before? Do you think this training will help you? Really help you with your NCLEX preparation? If you think the answer is yes, and you want to continue the rest of the days, from day one to day seven of our YouTube uh, training, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, okay? That way you receive constant information 
about new videos and all the other training days for this week. So make sure if you haven't done so, do it now. Subscribe to our NCLEX Crusade International, that's our English version channel. Because we have two channels. The other channel, everything's in Spanish. Here is our English version of NCLEX Crusade. So NCLEX Crusade International. If you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe and activate the bell. So every time we're live or we post something, you receive a notification. If you don't click on that bell, it's not going to tell you when we're live. So it's very important. Two, on the comment section of this video, I posted a link to our Telegram channel. It's important that each one of you, you are in this Telegram channel. So click on the link and join the channel. That way is an another way you can receive information. Join the group. I think right now we have about 1,200 students, I think, so far. Okay? And are you ready for day two of for past the NCLEX step-by-step seven-day training? If you're ready, comment on the section, I am ready. It will be tomorrow. Same YouTube channel, same time. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you join the Telegram group, the Telegram channel, I will post tomorrow morning the agenda, the topics that we will discuss in our tomorrow training. If you're not on that channel, then you're not going to know until it is time for the training. I think, so that is it, guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for staying. Mo I think everybody stayed from beginning to end. And that really shows that uh, you're interested in your NCLEX preparation. And it really shows that you liked what you've seen so far. And like I said, it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. I will teach you a lot of information in seven days. You're going to see that it's never one hour exactly. So you will learn a lot. We, sh we should have about 10, 12 hours of training throughout the, the seven day training. Okay. Well, that is it for me. Thank you for your support. Thanks to everyone that used that super chat, super sticker and supported our YouTube channel. Like I said, this is free. Uh, I don't charge for, for this NCLEX preparation on this channel. And I, ap I appreciate any support that you give the channel today. And I hope the best for each one of you. I hope that you can pass your NCLEX on the next attempt. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.